All right. Um, so I'm going to give a quick review of my experiences when I went to a rallycross. Now I don't, I didn't haven't seen anybody use this app with um, rallycross yet, so I figured I would give it a try. Um, since you use it with autocross, obviously. Overall, the rallycross is the same thing as autocross. Uh, you set your in and out points uh, that you want to be triggered, and you go from there. Um, the thing that sucks sometimes is you can't get on the actual track to set your in and out points. Um, so what I had to do for uh, this day is, luckily we had a parade lap. Uh, so I went on the parade lap and I set my in point uh, for the starting, then I went through my lap. Then when it ended, I stopped, waited a few seconds, then I hit my out point. Um, then I went back and I adjusted the um, direction of the triggers. Because I noticed with the smaller autocrosses track, uh, if you ha <clears throat> if you have the start and finish point really close to each other and you don't have a direction to it, um, depending on your the GPS signal and your GPS, uh, it may not trigger or it may trigger sooner uh, in certain instances. And that actually um, happened to me at the rally cross. Uh, even though I set a directional finish, it actually cut. Um, the lap, there's two more turns that I had to do that was very close to the finish and kind of that direction and I kind of cut it off. The issue that I had again was the finish point trigger radius I think was too big um, and what happened is as you can see it stopped I have my finish point going that way and it stopped uh, three corners too soon. Um, the red line you can see where the track was supposed to go uh, and the blue line is what was actually recorded. What would be nice is if they visually, or if you visually could see the radius um, along with the um, trigger points, so you can kind of determine how big or how small the radius should be. Uh, and I know there's this, uh, settings that you can change to uh, determine how big the radius of the trigger you want it to be, either really wide or really small. But there's really no visual representation of how uh, wide or narrow that trigger is. And it'll be just nice to have that uh, on the map view of where you see the trigger. So for the smaller autocross tracks, you can kind of see if anything's going to be uh, interfering. So I couldn't get on the track, so I had to use my prey lap to set the start and finish triggers. What sucked is after I did the finish trigger and I was in the pits, uh, adjusting the directional uh, orientation of the trigger... Uh, the app crashed on me and what really sucked is it lost those triggers so I there was no way for me to add those triggers after the fact easily uh, without being on the track and it'd be another feature that would be really nice to have is uh, when you're in the map view you can uh, basically possibly even maybe hold down on the map of where you want it to go uh, or where you want the trigger and you can add the trigger because currently right now the only way you can add a trigger is where you're currently at or you can input the GPS coordinates. It'd be nice if you can actually just drag it where you want on the map. I basically kind of had to waste the lap to get my in and out points. Um, so I had four, seven laps that day uh, and I was only able to record five of those with Harry's lap timer. Um, and after that, the app crashed, uh, my first actual lap, uh, I tried doing it again, but it was I was basically staged, and I was trying to select the endpoint, but it was giving me an error saying that it couldn't read the GPS. So basically, there's another lap gone, so my second lap is when I did that, which kind of sucks. Uh, another thing that sucks is, once you name the track and you have everything ready to go, um, there's really no way to rename the track to a different name if you spelled something wrong. Um, at least I couldn't figure it out. I could be wrong. Uh, you'd have to basically create a new, new track uh, and do the in out points again. There is really, that I know of, no easy way or quick way to basically save your track. So I created the start and finish points, um, and I just want to save those. Uh, as basically a track uh, and I couldn't figure out an easy way to do that. Um, I know you can create tracks, it's a little bit more involved. Uh, I just wanted something um, 
that I could save for later. Basically, I did my in out uh, points, um, and I want to save that for later. I really can't. Uh, so if I want to come back to here, load it again, I really can't. Another thing that really sucked that I'm going to blame on Apple again with the iOS 7 is when I got home to view one of my laps, uh, the app crashed. Not surprising. Um, so I had to restart my iPad and go back into Harry's lab timer. Um, but what I noticed was there was no video associated with the lap. I'm like, oh shit, how am I going to get this lap back? Um, but luckily you can, um, if you go to the videos list, you can relink um, the video that was already recorded. Luckily the video is still there so I could relink it. Um, but it kind of freaked me out for a little bit because that was a good lap that I wanted. So that is my quick uh, review of Harry's Lab Timer and my experience of it while I was rally crossing. Um, overall, it's probably it's a very feature-packed application. Um, it can be very finicky at times. Uh, some things are not uh, intuitive as I think they should be. Um, I guess overall, I probably give it about a 75 to 85 uh, percent of my liking.